you guys did play them twice last year. Yeah. Oh, I got those scores written down here. Yeah. Uh, you played them last year. <laughs> you guys won 47 19, um, was one score I saw, and then um, lost them earlier in the season. So, an earlier game, 25 33. Mm-hmm. So, kind of lost a close game and then um, beat them pretty bad. Okay, so yeah, a uh, couple couple games with them last year. Uh, talk about uh, you know those two games in particular, since that's the first opponent this year to kind of kick off the season. Um, first game, uh, let's see here. It was our second game. Right? It was, our second, it was April twenty fifth. Yeah, yeah, give it to me. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, that was. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just think we were um, kind of missing some key component um, players in some different positions. Um, we had. Um, we were holding them pretty tight until kind of like the very end. We um, had some injuries that happened there. But overall, like I said, um, they brought their best game that day. Um, and we we had our multiple errors that kind of just fell on top of things um, towards the end of, the, uh, end of that match. Or I'm saying match, let's go into volleyball. Yeah. Um, at the end of that game. And so, um, like I said, it was, it was to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, Kat, just going off of what Nyla said, it was one of those games just back and forth, back and forth, uh, the score being 25-33. They just ended up with the ball, with the time on their hands. Uh, we didn't get it back uh, with enough time to finish and capitalize. And that ended up being our only loss of the season until playoffs. Mm-hmm. So we definitely, like she mentioned, there was injuries during that game, rehabbed, looked at our game plan, schemes, mm-hmm. and kind of capitalized on our – rest of the season learning from those mistakes yeah because yeah, i was gonna say i mean so it looks like played it. them again <laughs> looks yeah. like it who wasn't even close 47 19 you know. no. yeah 47 19 was the, the score that was on the website yeah. we played them in june so june 9th yeah we welcomed um, them home so yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of whooped them so yeah. uh do you guys trade film with with the other teams uh you know and be able to scout your opponents a little bit we do it's actually required um, okay. from our league but um we use um huddle and crossover now this year this will okay. be our first year we doing crossover but we use that and we exchange and we watch film um the beauty about that with probably any coach could agree with is that we have the opportunity to do it on our own um, time but as team we come in and review it with the right. coach mm-hmm. um, yeah. but yeah it's been a great tool for us to prepare for the games um, some of us have been playing for a while we used to have to pop the BCR in and <laughs> yeah <laughs> That That's was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I remember when I started coaching, you know, on Saturday morning, I would have to, because I was the young guy on staff, I would have to, like, drive, you know, 25 minutes to meet another coach and literally exchange a VHS oh, yes. tape exactly. and then get in my car and drive back 20, yeah, and then, that was you it. know. We had one VHS tape to break down, you know, our next team. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's mm-hmm. ten of us coaches sitting around trying to watch, watch this one, one tape. tape. Yep. And, you know, one guy's not really paying attention and he misses something. Oh, run that back. Run it back. <laughs> you're like, oh, I've seen this play ten times. So, yeah, um, huddle and, and, you know, that, that definitely makes it nice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so how many times a week do you guys practice? Um, well, before season, we are usually four days, three to four days a week. Okay. Um, he kind of alternates it, so we have some breaks here and there. Um, and then, of course, when season starts, we play on Saturday, so we usually have that Sunday oh. off for mm-hmm. rest, and then we get right back into it the next following week. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So a couple times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your kind of favorite part of football? Playing football, playing in this league. <laughs> well, I say, it, it, I say it don't have to be a super special meaning. Like, yeah, you know, my no. heart and soul. And you'd be like, man, I'm knocking somebody out. It is. Just, it's ah. the luxury of knocking someone out and then going to have a drink with them afterwards, and then we talk about it. Like, how did you feel? You know, um, yeah. What what was that like? You know, how? Why would your quarterback put you in the middle? 
or you know throw a wrap that way because I'm sitting there, you know, you know stuff yeah. like that. You know, right. I'm kind of just building up. Those are the fun moments. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I just like cutting people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the the PG version of how I usually phrase that. Uh, cut blocking is my favorite. So let's put the I, word block in there. Yeah, you know. <laughs> To be able to hit somebody and, and not get in trouble is kind of a nice luxury. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. yeah. I would agree. I mean, outside of the whole family, being a part of a team mm-hmm. still, um, using it as an escape of your daily life, it's kind of as women, you're always taught to say, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry for doing that. And on the football field, there is no sorry. It's mm-hmm. like, no, I actually meant to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're welcome. Uh-huh. So just kind of like get that out of your system and then have it be okay. An environment like Nyla said, but then still going out afterwards and sharing drinks with the team across from you and still being all friends afterwards. It's yeah. Yeah. hard to find that at this age in life and even growing up. Yeah. Um, what kind of going through preseason camp and everything, you know, I mean, for every football team that I've been a part of, it's always a grind. I mean, I'm sure, do you guys feel that grind? Are you ready to start? Hitting somebody besides your own teammates. Yeah, definitely. But like I said, it's something in the air this year um, mm-hmm. where it, it – I, I don't think I ever was uh, at a point where I was just like, oh, my God, I'm just tired or I've never been like that because football has been such a sh- big part of my life. Um, but this year it's just like I have – I don't know about them, but I have been excited to get to practice. I mean, just the different things that we're doing mm-hmm. to prepare for the game, um, from weight training to just um, seeing new people in different positions and seeing how they're bringing that apart and bringing it together. I mean, it's just been a wow factor for me. And it's, and um, watching how the coaches are engaging with the players now, um, not that they have not, but I'm just saying it's just mm-hmm. it's, it's a whole different vibe. And so – um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is time, and um, you know, we were kind of talking about that a little bit earlier today. It's just like, I mean, it was a little bit earlier, where it's just like, I can't wait till four thirty, and four thirty is our time that we arrive at the field, and yeah, that time to smell the well, smell the turf. It used to be grass, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, smell that fresh cut grass, or you know, you know, yeah. poppy seeds, whatever you want to say, um, out there, and you're just ready to get going. Mm-hmm. Seven o'clock kickoff. <laughs> yeah, seven o'clock kickoff at Truman High School uh, here in Kansas City. I'm sorry, uh, you know, again, and um, so, you know, like we said, this team's kind of had several different names throughout the years, but it's the Titans. Uh, women football, I feel like, is getting more and more traction mm-hmm. in the last few years. I mean, it helps. You know, the NFL is starting to implement female referees. There's teams that have female assistant coaches. Uh, at that level. So, I mean, how have you guys seen the growth of this over the last five years and kind of where do you think it'll go in the next five years? I would have to say coming from the first team that I played on in Knoxville was a first year team. I was part of that startup process of starting a women's football team in a city that didn't really know about women's football. Uh, I was fortunate enough to attend the women's world football games that they didn't have it this year, but I went for four years in a row. And what that was was um, internationally, women came over. At one point, we had 220 girls from 17 different countries. And then media started taking attention to that Mm -hmm. um, because for football to grow, it can't just happen in the U.S. It's Canada, Britain, everywhere else. Um, And as other countries started to take notice, the U.S. started to take notice, and word just started to spread on social media. And then once that takes effect, you start seeing the networking happening. And once that network happens, I mean, everywhere I look now, there's women football and commercials. I think that's a very Mm -hmm. big trend right now. Mm -hmm. Big companies are finally taking on that. Um, Mm -hmm. On the sidelines, we're looking, seeing Katie Sowers, Sarah Thompson, um, Phoebe up in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. It's changing bucks just hired their first two coaches. So the more you see it, the more it's going to be the norm. Hopefully the more it grows. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah Any, anything else to add there? Oh, no. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> it's, 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 trending. it's an amazing scene to watch, um, to see, yeah. and, and that we are actually adding value to 
um, whatever component that we're a part of. So with the NFL, I mean, different insights, different views um, about how maybe we're approaching or engaging with the athletes. Um, um, and people are taking that serious. It's not, mm-hmm. okay, well, you're just going to stand here and be the water girl or just yeah. hold our pens and paper. I mean, they're actually involved, and that's mm-hmm. wonderful. That's a that's a leap turning over um, in so many different ways. And um, it's very empower, empowering uh, for young girls to see. Um, and when we have young ladies that are out there watching our games and, you know, they – to where they were hearing that women are not doing this and then so they come out and watch us and they're just like in awe I like, oh my that. gosh yeah, yeah I can do it mm-hmm. I can do that and <clears throat> I see 40 50 women doing this on a regular basis and it's just so comfortable for them and then now they're they're we're mentoring to them and uh, we're positive role models for them and we're telling them it's like no go try for that team at your school mm-hmm. and don't just only be this position be anything you want to be mm-hmm. you know and then come to us or go somewhere else however you want to do it but definitely it's it's there we're making we're making we're setting uh paths for that to occur one day after we retire yeah. <laughs> and Whatever never, that day. Never, <laughs> never, never, yeah, i'm never retired I'm 90 years old strong left <laughs> there we go. Uh, um and i i know you know actually a college that's you know just a couple hours from here uh central methodist yep. signed the mm-hmm. first uh girl uh, signed a letter of intent Safety. yeah um you know to play a not a position that is not a kicker thank you mm-hmm. so yeah. um you know they're the first school to kind of take that chance mm-hmm. you know it, it always takes that first one mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, to see like, hey, she can come here, she can play, mm-hmm. and you know, to give her that opportunity. Exactly. Um, you know, say once it works out, it's mm-hmm. just gonna, it's just gonna no, go. It is. It's yeah. gonna be awesome. Because it, it will work out. It will. Yeah. yeah. I That's mean, right. she Thank she you. was she's from somewhere in California. I can't remember the city, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. I have a friend that coaches at Central Methodist, so. Um, you know, I talked to him about her actually a few weeks ago. Really? So he's pretty excited to get her. You need to have her know. come to our games. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we'll work on that. Thank you. She, she's not. She's not. She's here recruiting. Yet. She's recruiting for the yeah. team. Yeah. Recruiting for her the next couple of years. Well, not right? just that. You know. Yeah. You know. No. There's. There's. You know. We want her on our, our sideline. Yeah. I mean, support. maybe just come and support. Yeah, because that's yeah. that's amazing for her. And I believe she was the one that was in the NFL Toyota. commercial. Toyota. Was it Toyota, the car? Yeah. She was mm-hmm. in one of the car she commercials. She was in a commercial yeah. for the Super Bowl okay. uh, games. That yeah. was her in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know he. That definitely opened up the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, when I talked to him, he was he was pretty excited about you know getting her getting her here and you know getting an up close look and and getting her rotating in there at, at safety. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you know, see, she's an athlete. Yeah, yeah. kind of see what she can do. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, uh, so I mean, obviously with with women's football and and just the different pieces growing, um, you know, the the league, the women's football alliance. Uh, you know, you said there's like 64 teams. I mean, that's a ton of teams and, and a ton of cities. You know, so um, here in Kansas City, obviously the, the top tier, we, we have a top tier team. Um, you know, made it to the semifinals last year, the Titans, and we're excited about that. Pretty pumped about that. There was actually a question I wanted to ask about the tiers. Mm-hmm. How was that decided? There is a um, kind of a by numbers um, maybe even by not even maybe even but um, by experience. Uh-huh. Um, usually, a team that's coming in as a newer newer mm-hmm. team, they would start at maybe a tier three. Um, okay, we wouldn't play a team that have never been into the league. Even if they had some experienced players, they're just new to this whole system, this process. Right. Um, also by region territory too um, that makes a difference there's some teams that may not have a lot of um, um, teams in that area so they're kind of placed in that because of travel okay. and uh, such nature but yeah those three are usually the top ways that they place teams um, we've been tier one um, although we have small numbers we still because of our expertise and just kind of our experience uh remain in that top tier and what we have brought to the table keeps mm-hmm. us in that that top tier uh, yeah team. what uh how many how many players do you have on your team i know that now um uh, <laughs> i mean I th- <laughs> I we we're have in. we're at 30 30 about 30 30 35 
30 to 35. 30 to 35, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was say I, I got the roster last yeah. night, but I was. 30 to